Hello vlog, welcome back to my channel. I have a very special guest today because Brady and I have been wanting to do a little YouTube Q&A. Hi Chiggy, come here. <laughs> Hi baby. <laughs> Do you want some pizza? We got some dinner, so we're about to put Trig down for bed. Um, he already ate, but he seems to be hungry. And then Brady and I are gonna sit down and do a little Q&A for you guys, which we're so excited about. Okay, Brady and Trig are shooting a little gun that my parents got him for Easter. But this is some gnocchi, we're gonna try this. We got this from a place called Pomo. Looks pretty good. Are you shooting that? What'd you get me, just gnocchi? Yes. And the pizza. Mm. Is it good? Mm -hmm. Can I try one? Mm -hmm. Oh. oh. That's pretty good. That is good. Did you show the lasagna? Mm -mm. The lasagna kind of doesn't Brady look appetizing. Said, the lasagna looks like schlock. Kind of sus. <laughs> Might be good though. So we're going to try that next. And then nice. we got pizza. And the salad. I'm liking the snooky though. I mm -hmm. think this is like a kale Caesar salad. A kale crunch, crunch, crisp bars. Okay, this is what pepperoni pizza is kind of cold. We door dash this. It's a Diavolo pizza. Yummy. What does that mean? Like a spicy mm. something or other. Get it's it good. sexy. Get it sexy. I had sexy. it the other night. Get it sexy. <laughs> the shoulder. Okay, lasagna. Mm. Going in. Do you like it? Mm. It's like a 5 out of 10. Oh, that's low. It's not very good because it's really cold too. Turn the oven on. Noki's my favorite so far. Mm. Mm -hmm. Good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me try that tastes this. delicious. Guys, I don't know if I said this already. I got a new camera. I got a new smaller camera for when I'm like on the go vlogging. And then I got this bigger Canon for more like sit down, get ready with me videos, Q and A's. Cameras are hard to work. Like, I don't, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm like constantly like changing the settings, trying to figure it out. So hopefully, hopefully this works. But I know you guys will tell me if it looks bad. So I also got a mic. So I think the sound is going to be like a lot better on my videos. We're getting into the YouTube game, you know what I mean? Today was Easter. Today so is happy Easter. Easter, whether you celebrate traditionally or however. you don't, however you want, or you don't celebrate at all. I just hope you had a good day. We are pretty chill about Easter. And I mean, that's a whole, we probably will get questions about this in the Q&A, but Brady and I just like aren't very religious. So we just kind of have fun with Easter. It's like about family for us. You know, we do the egg hunt and stuff, but kind of just like spending time with family so that's what we did all day we went to my mom's house and my dad's house because my parents are divorced um it was a jolly good time and then i took a power nap that was great you did sleep so we had a good day wes come here wes come here come here come here up up why are you not jumping up up come on wes say hi Say hi for the vlog. Say hi, my name's Wesley. And I'm four years old. And I'm a chocolate lab. Wesley's the best. He had fun today too. He went to my dad's house, swam in the pool. But my dad actually just got a new white lab named Zulu. And Zulu's not really used to other dogs yet. She's not so very big yet. Yeah, she's very small. So she was very confused by Wesley and his crackhead energy. And size. To say the least. And Wes has no boundaries. So he will just go sniffing butts jumping in the pool, doing everything. But after that, we kind of just took Wes home because it was also really rainy today. And we didn't so, want to leave him outside in the rain. Yeah, we felt bad because we couldn't really bring him inside the house because it would have just been chaos. And then we like didn't want to leave him outside because he was just like in the rain. And then my dad does have like a covered patio area with a pool fence, but we didn't really want to leave him in that either because then he would have just been like jumping on the door i feel like we would have just been taunting him by being inside so after He's that we decided to take him home so brady turned on a 24 hour dog relaxing tv thing on youtube <laughs> and wes just hung out at home okay next time he says we're gonna go put trey down for bed and then we're gonna go sit on the couch and answer some questions because i asked you guys on tiktok and instagram 
any questions that you had for Brady and I because I don't feel like Brady has gotten like a formal introduction oh, no. on the YouTube and oh, no. he's my husband. So obviously he's very important to me, big part of my life. And I want to do like a little video just kind of talking about us. Cause I just think that'll be fun. Okay. Okay. So awkward. <laughs> See you guys soon. See you guys soon. Triggy, show everyone your new dinosaur gun. Oh yeah, I do need my phone. <laughs> Simply Lemonade. This blanket's just really big. Well, you're giving yourself like most of it. You little bum. Dude, I don't have Oh to... my god, are you being for real? Wait, this is This man right. is a blanket whore. There we go. A blanket hog, if I will. That is better. Okay, let's crack this. I say we crispy. First, we're gonna start on my TikTok because I asked you guys on a specific get ready with me if you had any questions. And so I think that's the one I'm gonna go in and I'm get yawning already. Oh my god. Okay, well, <laughs> stop yawning. <laughs> Wake up. Okay. Actually, we're gonna start on the Instagram ones because I can't find the ones that I had. Oh, here we go. Okay. Oh wow, that's a lot. We got a lot of questions. This was not even all of them, and I have like at least 12 screenshots right here of like the full questions on Instagram. So thank you for asking a lot of questions. Okay, so did either of you go to college? If so, what did you study? So we both went to college briefly. We both went, <laughs> we just didn't finish. I went to BYU Hawaii in uh, Hawaii, obviously, on Oahu. Which fun fact, because a lot of people are like shocked when they hear that Brady lived in Hawaii, but that is why he lived in Hawaii. For school, yep. And I was there for about a little less than a year. I studied business management. Um, I thought that initially when I went to school, I thought I wanted to go into medicine actually. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then I got to school and really fell in love with some of my business classes. And so I changed it to business management. And then after that, Brady kind of always wanted to go like the entrepreneurial route. Mm -hmm. um, entrepreneur, if you will. Um, I went to school originally, I thought genuinely that I was going to go for nursing. Um, I'm not going to lie though. Like I did not ever really know what I wanted to do. I kind of touched on this in my Q and a that I did. Like, I think three videos ago, I switched my major and I always tell people this is like, so okay. Cause I thought there was something wrong with me which I mean, I did drop out, so. But I switched my major like five times in college. I went from like nursing to business management to back to nursing, then to dental hygiene. And then I think after that I dropped out, which in between that I did take like a semester off, went back and then took another semester off because I went and got full-time jobs in between. Um, and I was already nannying and stuff, but I kind of did that to see like, do I actually want to be in school or do I want to just go start and try to like work and build a career? Um, and then I ended up going to dental assisting school. Did That's you ever we say where married. you went to school? You said what you went for. Oh yeah, I'm so sorry. I went to school in Utah um, at UVU. So the reason I asked you that is because I didn't finish mine either. Oh, I'm sorry. I, no, but it, it went in with your story. So it was fine. I was waiting until you were done. So I went to BYU Hawaii, mm -hmm. came home for the summer, met Emily who was in Utah at the time. And then we fell in love with me. Yeah, of course, fell in love. And <laughs> fell in love I with couldn't that, that juicy ass. <laughs> I couldn't leave her. So I transferred You schools. originally tried to ask me to come to Hawaii and I was like, Hell Which, to the would you though. have re would you have regretted that though? Our life would have been different. It worked out how it was supposed to but I would have regretted I think that would have been fun. I don't think I would have regretted at all. I, I was actually thinking about this the other day, which is funny. I was like, what if I had just like said yes and like moved to Hawaii? Yeah. 
My parents would have fucking killed me. I was so to lucky. To move to Hawaii like, with a boy like that, yes. they would have been like, you're crazy. Yeah, and yeah. I was so lucky and like privileged that my dad was paying for me to go to school. And I know that he would have never been like, oh yeah, let me just pay for you to go fuck around Hawaii. In Hawaii, Like, yeah. he was the one that when I said like, I want to take a semester off, he was like, okay, well then you're going and getting Board. a full-time yeah. job and you're working and you're going to see like real life. Um, which I had had full-time job before jobs before but never during college um, And I actually ended up loving it So he didn't think I was going to like working like a full-time job without a college degree But I ended up getting like a pretty good job yeah. um, As an executive assistant and I ended up liking it But then I went to dental assisting school mm -hmm. and then got pregnant and then became a stay-at-home mom and then started social media <laughs> Okay, Jasmine said what are y'all's biggest icks for each other? Okay, um Ix. This might end our relationship. Okay, uh, my only real ick that I have of Emily's is that she says instead of anyway, <laughs> she says anyways with an S, and that's gonna be controversial because there's gonna be people that say, "Oh, I say anyways." It's not gonna be shocking to anyone though because like but how, I how say, often do I grammatically like mess things up? Oh, frequently. I get so much shit for that, and I'm like. <laughs> It doesn't mean I'm stupid, I just... No, it's fine. I speak the way that I speak, and it is anyways, and it will never change. It's anyway, but <laughs> that's my egg, because she's perfect. Oh, thanks, babe. You're welcome. Wait, I'm not perfect, though. Well, I, you know, I don't have any other eggs, though. Like, In you his don't, eyes, I am. You don't give me the egg, and the, except for when you say anyways. Do I give you the egg when, like, my butt is so big that, like, it can't fit in my pants? Yeah, that just is, like, such an egg. Okay, I'm like, okay, well, my icks. <laughs> no, I actually only have, like, one ick of Brady's, and actually... You probably have a few. There could be two. One of my icks is that he has to sleep... Like, I like a sound machine. We actually got in, like, the smallest bicker about this last night because Brady was so tired, and that was the moment that I decided to be like, let's just sleep without a sound machine tonight. And Brady was like, what the fuck? Like, we are not changing <laughs> like, our sleeping habits at 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> So, w number one is that he has to sleep with, like, the he wants to sleep actually with, like, two sound machines. He sleeps with the fan on our air purifier on high, and then he sleeps with a sound machine, full-blown. Um, and The that sound kinda, machine's on your side. Okay, though. but that kind of drives me crazy, because I'm like, that's a lot of noise. Like, I don't need that, like, blasting in my ear. Truthfully, I don't need them both. I can have one okay. or the other. So, we're a compromise, and we're yeah. setting that right now. My second ick is Brady does this thing with his toes, and he knows that this is my ick. Like, we, this is, like, the only ick I've ever... And you have really loud farts, but so do I. <laughs> but okay, so he rubs I'm his toes of the together. few people that have a very long second toe. It's longer than my big toe. A lot toe. of people have long toes, though. I just have, like, an alien second toe. Yeah. So... And I do rub them together a lot. Yeah, he, it's like his focusing, like, it's like when he's like watching a show. I like flick them. Yeah, and Trig has started doing it, which worries me, but it's okay. <laughs> What's the hardest part? I guess this is a question more for me, but what is the hardest part about being an influencer and how do you deal with some of the hate? I'm not going to sit here and say that there's really anything hard about it because influencing itself in the job is like extremely, an extremely privileged job. You get to basically work for yourself. You get to make your own schedule, especially as a mom. It's like my dream job. So I have no complaints on like it being a hard job. Is it time consuming? Yes, because you're like setting your own schedule. And I feel like the amount of time you put in is kind of like what gets you results. So in that way, you can kind of put in as much time as you want or as little, which again, also a privilege because if I have a really busy day, I can decide like, okay, I'm going to put less time into my videos today. I don't know if that makes sense. How do I deal with hate? I feel like I've actually talked about this a lot with like friends of at the very beginning when I didn't have really a following, I feel like I actually had like super thick skin and I was like, I don't care. Anybody could say anything to me and it like wouldn't bother me because that's just genuinely like the kind of person I am is I always had thick skin. I had like seven siblings and I was constantly made fun of. So I'm just like, didn't care. Then when I started to gain a following, I remember it was actually like right when I hit a million followers, my anxiety like went through the roof because I knew that people were saying bad things about me, that they were making fun of me, whether it was like the way I looked or the way I spoke or the content that I made, whatever. And that was like really hard for me. Over time, I've learned that I just am never going to be able to make everyone like me. And I think that's my toxic trait is I'm like, what can I do to like fix things? And I do that with everything, like I'm a fixer. So I'm like, okay, how can I fix this? You cannot fix people not liking you most of the time, especially on the internet. It is just like a ruthless place. So I've just decided like I'm going to be myself 
I'm gonna always show up as myself for you guys and like if people don't like that that's fine like there are enough creators that like people can go find someone else that they like with that being said something I've learned in like the past year or so is sometimes the hate is actually good criticism and that's not to say that you should go read hate about yourself it's not to say that like bullying is condoned or anything like that but sometimes like and I think I was actually talking to my friend Amber about it she was saying one of the privileges of this job is that where else in your life where else in another job do you get like 100% honest criticism people don't care they will tell you what they think you don't get that anywhere and so I have tried to switch my mindset to like that's a privilege how I take it is up to me and if I decide to accept it is up to me what you do with it yeah, yeah what I do with it but like sometimes I have gotten criticism where I'm like you're right like I could do that better I could be better in this way I could show that better like and it actually has helped me. So I think that it's all your mindset as a creator and how you choose to like value your audience's opinion. But yeah, that's kind of my answer. I don't know if that answered it. Yeah. Over time, I feel like I've gotten a lot better with mm -hmm. dealing with it. Does it make it easier per se, but kind of just learn to like deal with it and that it's a part of the job. All the keyboard, keyboard warriors are gonna be like, oh, now I can give her hate, I'm helping her. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, no, literally, they're gonna be like, mm, let me help you out. Mm. <laughs> let me give you my critique. Okay, next question, does Brady work? No, I do not work currently. I think that... I'm... You do work, though. You're a stay-at-home dad. Well, I don't have a job currently. I don't work at a job yeah. currently. Um, but I am a stay-at-home dad, and I love it. It's great. And he's amazing at it. Um, that being said, I may work again in the future. I may not. I, that's open. I mean, I, I have things that I do want to do and my own goals and ambitions. So, uh, how that plays out over, you know, the next couple yeah, of like years. Yeah, like whether and, those turn into a career, don't know, but like you have things you want to do. Like Brady wants definitely. to go back to school. I honestly kind of like sometimes think about going back to school, like just for the experience which obviously is a privilege to be able to go back to school but but i feel really good about where we are at and too. what we are doing with our lives currently yeah um and so i think it's important to recognize you know the phase that we're in we're good with and we know not only where we are now but where we want to be mm -hmm. in the near future and in the long-term future you know it'll change as time goes but with where we are now we're good with it yeah and excited to see what the future brings as well yeah so. but brady's a stay-at-home dad and i think it's important to recognize i've gotten comments about that before and brady and i have so many conversations about this where we're like when you're a stay-at-home mom you recognize that like that is your job like you have your own roles that you are taking on in the home and although my job is a, a work from home job sometimes i travel for work i am still working and so brady and i have those different roles and i feel like we've gotten really good at like mm -hmm. balancing that and working together and being a team in that way but i i think that like people have to remember that whether it's a a man or a woman staying home being a stay-at-home parent is literally a full-time job and a half like i think genuinely it is people have done the math on the hours and it is like working a 60 hour job every oh, week like yeah. so and brady's so good at it he's so patient with trig he's such a good dad like i said we balance it so well you did used to own your car detailing business mm -hmm. he owned a business for five years and it did really well and then kind of once we moved to Arizona and we started to shift what do we want to do career wise do you want to stay at home or do we sorry do we hire a nanny once we kind of figured that out Brady decided to like start selling off his business do you remember what your first TikTok was yes I do what was it my first TikTok was a video I think it might still be up it was a video of Wesley and he was in his kennel and it was in our little Provo house our first uh -huh. one and it was to the song I always feel like somebody's watching me <laughs> and Wesley was like staring at me and I remember being like this is gonna go viral, viral. <laughs> this is gonna go I got like a thousand views <laughs> Yeah, that's your sign to just keep going i think after that i deleted tiktok for like the entire rest of quarantine though oh yeah because that, that was I didn't 2020 start up again yeah. until after trig was born yeah, which is crazy funny. that was back when that's i was like crazy. tiktok is so silly mm -hmm. i've never downloaded that well app. that's that's when it was like literally just dance videos and okay so two questions uh the first one is the story of how you met the second one is how did you both confess to each other 
when you had a crush on each other? How do you want to go about this question without it being so long? Because I feel like we could do a whole story time on how we met. I don't really know how to answer that question, but I will answer with the story of when I first said that I love you. Yeah. Okay. 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 Brady's so going to answer this I'll one. start with the story of how we met. I knew some of Emily's roommates. As we already mentioned a little bit ago, I was in Hawaii. I had come home for the summer, home being Utah. And Emily had just come back from being in Arizona for the summer. So yeah. she was just coming back to start the next semester of school. I was actually about to be leaving to go back for my next semester of school. And I knew some of her roommates. Long story <laughs> short, I went over to hang out at her house. She had come back from Arizona. My semester and, was already started. Like Yes. So she was um, actually doing math homework when I walked in and saw her for the first studious time. Studious queen. <laughs> I just was telling her, was it just yesterday? What time did she hear? Is he awake? I feel like Trig is possibly being sus and he might be awake. One moment. Oh, is he? Chill, oh, chill. Chill, Wes. Wes, sit, sit, sit. It was Wes. He Wes was crying was in our room. This is Wesley. <laughs> Wesley is a lap dog, as you can see. He We're doesn't both, weigh 85 pounds. We're both getting crushed. He's so cute though. I wish he would just play with us and not be such a spaz. I was just telling you the other day when we were going on our date to the movie that I remember clear as day the first this time so cute. that I even saw Emily. The first time I laid my eyes on her, I remember it clear as day. He looked at me in the car on the way to our like movie night the other night and he was like, I don't remember what we were talking about, but he basically just said, like, I will, like, never forget the first moment I saw you. And I was like, excuse <laughs> me? I was like, unfortunately, I don't remember that moment. I do, but I don't remember it, like, as clearly as I think Brady does, well, which here's I love. Thing. Like, I was expecting, I didn't know Emily. I had followed you on social media, like, a few months before when I was in Hawaii. Um, in July, but that was because on Instagram that was because in once September again, we met. Yeah. That was because once again, I knew her roommates. And so it was like this whole friend group of, mm -hmm. you know, girls that were hanging out. Long story short, I open the, or I, I walk in the house and Emily looks up from her math, like book. And I was like, homework. and I was like, uh -huh. <laughs> and I was also like, who is that? Like, I need to know who that girl is because I hadn't met her before. Anyway, long story short, that was the first time that we met. And that night, we don't need to go into too much detail of like. Of that night? Uh, Oh, I've talked about this on my Instagram. Let me just say it. Really yeah, quick. you explained it. Basically, we had originally connected, which this detail doesn't really matter, but we had originally connected. That was how connected. we first started talking, though, is what I was trying to say. Yes. Like, you and I first started, like, having a conversation was because of. Yes. Okay, so originally, Brady was talking to one of my roommates, who I'm still very close with, and they had kissed a couple times. They had met over the summer when I was back in Arizona. I also had just gotten out of a relationship at the time that they had probably started meeting. So, like, Brady was not on my radar. Mm -hmm. So that is why he followed me on Instagram and all my roommates is because he was like kind of trying to like read the vibe of her roommates and like her friends. You know what I mean? Like when you try to like get in with the friend group. I was a single guy and I was just like, yeah. it was a group of, you know, cute girls. And it was like, oh yeah, I'll follow them on like Instagram. Oh my God. You know? Anyways, by the time though that I had gotten back to Utah and started my semester and the night that Brady and I saw each other, they had already decided like we are better off as friends. She liked someone else. Like so they ended all, up getting it, married. Yeah, they actually. ended up getting married. They yeah. have a baby now. Like so cute. So it all worked out how it was supposed to. But she was actually the one that was like, get to know this get guy. Get to know this guy. He's a really good guy. Anyway, we kind of connected that night. We started talking. That was really how we met. That's yeah. kind of to answer the question. From there, we hung out like over a course of like a week. We hung out consistently like every day. Every day. I yeah. hoped that I would see Brady like every day. It's like those first like butterflies where you're like, oh, I hope I see him again. But it was never me like asking him to come over. It was like he would just happen to come over. I actually remember one of the nights was like we were waxing each other's noses. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. I do remember before? that. Mm -hmm. Anyways, and then like Brady had made a comment like when we were at In N Out one night that he like wasn't really talking to anyone. And so then I was like, oh. So then I think that night was when I kind of asked my friend like, so is he dating anyone? Like what's going on with him? And she was like, oh, he goes back to Hawaii in like two weeks. So that is like a pivotal part of the story is that mm -hmm. Brady was supposed to go back to BYU Hawaii for school to start his next semester. So at that point on, I kind of was like, okay, I like blocked my heart off because I fall quick. And so I was like, okay, if he's leaving, I'm not even going to kiss him. I'm not even going to do anything because that's just like not how I was. Like I was just like 
unless you're like emotionally available i'm not gonna even try anything and then basically and i was short, basically like oh i'm leaving in two yes. weeks so like maybe i could hook oh up my God. <laughs> and be on my way yeah so basically <laughs> after that long story long story short we we just couldn't get enough of each other and um we kept hanging out in group settings and then one night we kind of went off on our own and like we're watching a show on the living room floor it was yeah, actually it was bachelor like, in paradise which is so funny and it and was the kind of thing where we were sitting next so to each other but it was other, like we like not didn't like want to touch touching. each other because we like didn't know if that was the vibe so we're like <laughs> this we're like this we're like and your heart is like racing yeah. so basically bachelor in paradise ends brady leaves and i'm like so bummed because he like doesn't even hug me doesn't kiss me but i'm like what the fuck so then i go to my friends and they're like did anything happen did anything happen i'm like no he just left like whatever and at that point they were like girl grow some balls like just like kiss him and be on your merry I had way it right where i wanted her whatever <laughs> shut up he had no fucking clue anyway so then actually what happened was my friends took my phone and they texted brady and were like are you home yet you should come back brady came over that night we ended up we ended up and of course kissing. i was like yeah i'm on my way yeah like, brady's like i'm i'm on my way like, yeah literally flipping around yeah so then brady came back we ended up kissing his hands are sweating as i'm telling this story <laughs> and um after that we were literally inseparable and yeah. then the first time brady told me he loved me yes yeah, so the i first was time... not like he, you wanted to tell me you love me before this well, but i stopped him because yeah. i had just gotten out of a relationship where i had been the one that was always like i love you i love you i love you and so i was really like on my guard because with my ex he had never reciprocated that it was like he kind of strung me along and then you know what i mean mm -hmm. so i was like really scared of that happening More to me again yeah. so i was like reserved so um we were at my sister's house which is where i was living at the time mm -hmm. i had moved pretty quickly from hawaii to utah and before i found a place to live which long story short ended up being like across the street from where emily lived yeah anyway, we, li we lived like two houses away from that her. doesn't matter that was just another comment so i was at my living at my sister's house and we were it was like you know i don't know what day of the week but just you know for example your average sunday just sitting watching a movie and we were sitting on what like a we are sitting on this like blow something. up like the one that you like sway oh, in the wind like a, to like like a yeah turn like a blow a up couch chair. basically anyway we were just sitting watching a movie my like siblings and other people were sitting <laughs> on the couch behind us and i just lean over and i'm like i love you and i was like i love you too <laughs> but it was the thing where but it had been kind of pent up because there sure, had been a time before say. that like literally within like a week of knowing each other i feel like brady and i just kind of knew that there was something there and he pretty quickly like wanted to tell me that he loved me and i kind of stopped him and was like don't say it until you mean it like mm -hmm. don't say it until it's like you say it and then you can't stop saying it sort of thing mm -hmm. i don't want to just have you say it to say it and like make me feel a way and then it's like you don't actually feel that way because i love you is like so serious so. yeah but but it was the kind of thing where it was like we really were spending so yeah. much time together we were like inseparable and we were it was like i was just laying there i'm like looking at her and i was just like i love you like <laughs> I, I do you. i love you too so that's uh that is the whole story time do you want more kids if so when yes we want one more kid maybe two brady says sometimes maybe two that would be like a bonus child <laughs> if we had three bonus just like it would be uh it'd be like the okay we had two we actually want three but right, right now we think two if so when soon question mark ish question mark <laughs> i still have an id so we are not pregnant we don't plan on getting pregnant right now but if we were up to Brady, I would be pregnant right now. Like, 30 weeks pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> like, or, yeah. Like, a baby would have arrived yeah. yesterday. <laughs> no, but we are... I feel like we're getting... We're ready. Um... <laughs> <laughs> subject <continues>. change. <laughs> Does Brady... I'm just kidding. We both agree that, like, we're ready. I think I'm just more scared because as the woman, like, you're the one that has to be pregnant again. Like, hormones change. It's like a scare... Yeah. It's like a really great thing but also scary thing and sometimes i have days where i'm like mentally i don't know if i'm there yet but then 99 percent of the time i'm like i'm ready so we'll see does brady like being on social media and what are his thoughts on it as a job can i say one thing yeah brady is like the most supportive spouse with social media like genuinely i don't think i would have kept going if like it weren't for him constantly being like just keep doing it like just keep having fun just keep being yourself because there were so many times where i like wanted to quit and you were always like 
so supportive and I feel like that's actually what a lot of people lack in a spouse with social media because they think like until you like start doing well and like making money they're like oh this is so silly and then it's like not until the career picks up that they're like you're doing amazing mm -hmm. sweetie like you know what I mean Brady was always like that so thank you that you're welcome nice. Um, I do love being on social media. It has, I mean, completely changed our lives. Like 180. It has given us insane opportunities that, I mean, we had only dreamt of. Mm -hmm. So, um, all of that aside, I have loved to see Emily. Wesley is going ham on that toy yeah. down there. Um, all of that aside, I have loved to see Emily find her thing, though. She is a very, like, self-motivated and driven person and for her to i saw her without you know her thing that she was like putting her time and energy into and she's just not the same when she doesn't have something that she can give her all yeah. to you know obviously you do that in all categories of your life but i'm talking for you and for your own well, I job feel like and career in general, you know like your own thing yeah like i feel like in general i always try to stay busy like my dad always told me growing up like you are the way. kind of person that like you always need to be doing something yeah. and i think it's a mix of like my adhd and then also just my personality even when i was a stay-at-home mom like i was super fulfilled but i always felt like i needed like something more to keep me like even more busy you don't want it at all no i'm hot now. okay um and so yeah social media has like been that for me like and then it, it went from a hobby to a career but like and like a, it, it's been like a passion for you yeah like you've, and you really do get to decide like how much you want to put into it kind of like what i was saying earlier and i'm one of those people that like when i start something i'm like going to start it i'm gonna go hard it's kind of how i feel about youtube like i knew that i wasn't gonna start youtube until i could commit to like the time the help like camera equipment whatever and like Do really right honing way. into it and doing it the right way and like now that i've started i'm like all in but that's kind of how i am and yeah i just feel like social media has been good for me in that mm -hmm. way so uh recap i love being on social media i love it for emily and uh for her and the fact that it's her job it's amazing i mean we get to spend basically all day every day together as a family which is such a yeah. a great you know blessing and an opportunity yeah. for us so i want to be on it more myself <laughs> uh but that's my Brady own thing i need just, to like, be better post about. his own videos like just like right. cooking my videos. own kind of content but brady gets a little nervous behind the camera which is okay he at his own pace he will do it do it when he wants to <laughs> yeah my favorite of tricks jelly cats okay well i just got a bowl that's of oatmeal tough. i just Actually, got a bowl of oatmeal and is. that's my favorite but my favorite of his jelly cats is Buster. Same, that's what I was going to say. Because it's the first jelly cat we ever got him. So it's like sentimental. If it's not Buster, it's Ellie. Yeah, it's the <laughs> rattiest one. Like, it's been through the ringer, but like, it's so cute. Like, that is the jelly cat that I will put in his baby box. For sure. 100%. Oh, so cute. That is cute. Bonus. What was the name? Did you have a stuffed animal as a kid? Yeah. What was the name of it? Um... I think it was literally like bunny. Bunny. I named my blinky blinky and I named my bunny bunny. Like, <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Well, we're one and the same then because you know the name of my stuffed animal. Yeah. My stuffed animal was a black panther. I named my guy. <laughs> <laughs> literally, my guy. <laughs> What's our favorite thing to do together? What is a perfect day for you two? Mm. This is easy, I feel like. Then go. Okay. Ahead. Our favorite thing to do together is either family bike rides, watching a show together, or in that same category, I feel like Brady and I just love like going out to dinner and a movie. Mm -hmm. Our perfect day together is we wake up, we spend the morning as a family, we either like make breakfast or we go get breakfast, we go work out, and then we go on like a bike ride, and then we go about our day, mm -hmm. meetings, whatever else. But like morning, I feel like is when we just get to spend time together as a family. Mm -hmm. The only uh, day that would be more perfect than that for me would be just like a day on the beach as a family. Oh yeah, but, hundred percent. Like, normal routine, perfect day. Which we're actually is, going like, to Hawaii like, soon, yeah. so I'm like so excited for that. Yeah, I can't wait for That's that. That's going to be so fun. Okay, this is a question for me. It's about my breast implants. If you guys didn't know, I have 235cc silicone implants under the muscle. So this question was, did you get your implants under the muscle and which profile? I did get under the muscle. 
I got high profile. I feel like for a little while I actually regretted high profile because of how high they were. Like if you literally watch my old TikToks, they were up to my fucking collarbone. But now that I'm almost a year post-op, I love my boobs. I did have to get my right revised, so I feel like my right is still slightly catching up to my left, but my left looks so natural and so, like, they just look like my boobs. They don't look fake, and that's what I wanted with implants was for them to not look fake when people looked at me. So I love the choice that I did that, and I feel like even after another baby, they're just going to look even more natural, which is another reason I chose high profile is because I knew that I already had high sitting boobs. Um, so I knew that after another baby, they probably would just le look even more natural. What made That's you guys get a chocolate fun. lab? Brady and I both grew up with labs. It yeah. was like the only dogs we pretty much had at my dad's house, especially. I grew up with a black lab named Tessie. My parents actually rescued him when he was a puppy and I like loved him so much. And then my dad got a chocolate lab named Charlie and he actually just passed away probably like five years ago, six years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, and then now they have a white lab named Zulu. And I grew up with just one lab, a chocolate lab named Satchel. Satchel. And Wesley and Satchel look pretty alike. They do look very similar. So we knew we had to. And honestly, I've asked before like about other breeds of dogs, but I do think that when we move into our new house, because it has such a big yard, we will probably get another dog and it probably will be a lab. Yeah. Like, I just feel Most like Wes likely. wants another sibling. Well, and also we just they are really the best dogs we've just loved them so okay who is the crazier parent i don't know what it means by crazy maybe like who's more willing to like take risks and like i feel like we're both pretty chill parents yeah like the reins the like the reins are tight on certain things and i feel like especially as trick gets older reins will be tight on things but like for the most part i feel like we're pretty chill you're the crazier individual of the yeah. two of us, for sure. <laughs> but I feel like Brady does more crazy things with Trig, maybe. Yeah. What's our favorite things about each other? We did our X, so I feel like mm. this is a good one. What's our favorite things about each other? Or favorite thing. Let's do one. Okay, favorite thing? You get one. Ooh. Can't be my ass. One thing. Or my tits. Damn. Okay, well, I'm out of things, so I'm just kidding. <laughs> or my Okay, if I get one thing... It has got to be your drive Aww. because it really is rain or shine, good or bad, like you, you'll get it done. I've seen it day in and day out that it's honestly impressive and it inspires me because I don't have that. I'm motivated in different ways, but not like... The, On the, level the consistency of, yeah. and dedication that you show is very impressive. Thank you. That's what I'm trying to say. Thank you, babe. You're welcome. My favorite thing about Brady, I have many, so I'm like, okay. My favorite thing about Brady is just how kind he is. I've said this before. He is just like the kindest person. He will give the shirt off his back to like anybody, a stranger or someone he's known for like years and years and years. He is just so sweet, so kind. Thank you. Like, that was actually one of the things that made me, like, fall in love with him before I even knew a lot about him was just how highly everybody spoke of him. Like, I cannot think of one person who said a bad thing about Brady. Everyone was like, no, like, you're dating up. Like, he is the best, best personality, best guy ever. Like, even all of Brady's old high school friends, everyone, like, when we see them, they're just like, my guy. Like, you are the best. And I'm just like, it's true. Like, Brady is just the best. So. Thank you. That's what I love about you. I love you. I love you, too. Do y'all speak Spanish? No. Yo si. Hablo Espanol. Brady actually does speak fluent Spanish. He's very good at it. We're actually going on a very I exciting trip soon, and he's very excited I'm so excited um but brady served an lds mission we are not mormon anymore if you want to hear the story or answer questions on any of that because i know people have questions about that for us i've done like two podcasts about our entire story so i'm just gonna like direct you there um i did the weekly trash with josie and then i did um girls camp and both of those, I kind of told our whole Mormon story time. Brady grew up in the church. So Brady actually served a mission in Madrid, Spain for two, two years. years. So he is very fluent. I wish that I had more opportunities to speak Spanish. But you do every chance you get. Every chance I get, I, I do speak Spanish. But Say I wish... Say stuff. Say this in Spanish. Okay. 
cada vez que puedo habl hablar el español lo hago, pero muchas veces no puedo hab hablar el español. Uh, aquí, aquí en Arizona tenemos uh, trabajadores que trabajan en nuestra yarda. It's so hot. <laughs> <laughs> y hablo con ellos porque ellos hablan español, así que... <laughs> you look so happy when you speak it. I love it. I just said that the only real chance that I have to speak Spanish is with the guys that work in our yard because they speak Spanish and I talk with them. That's actually true. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's like the main... They come a couple times a month and so whenever and they're here, I just them. go say, Hey, how you doing? Like, yeah. chit-chat with them because... I really do I feel like that is the only Spanish. like time that you get to, unless he meets someone else who speaks fluent Spanish. Yeah. But actually, this is a good question because I feel like a lot of people had like little questions about this. How do you not let small fights or arguments ruin your whole day or alter your emotions so much? I mean, we're all human. We're so not like, perfect at this, but that can be challenging. Do you want me um, to answer this? Yeah. Like the first part? Yeah, go ahead. I think something obviously communication is so important. Like. Brady knows this like I'm not a great communicator sometimes. no you you are you've gotten a lot better yeah. but like number one communication is important so like you have to get good at communicating with each other we've been married for almost five years and I feel like just in the last like couple years we've gotten really good at like learning each other's communication style and then you also need to learn the way that the other person argues and I know that sounds so silly but you it, it's almost like another form of communication but I feel like in learning how another person handles those situations you're able to like help guide each other through that so that it doesn't turn into a bigger argument and like I said we're not perfect at this but like I would say those are my two biggest pieces of advice is like learn their communication style learn their love languages and learn basically how to help guide each other through arguments so that you can like get to a resolution as soon as possible and sometimes honestly with arguments there isn't always like this big resolution sometimes it's like taking 10 or 15 minutes like just away from each other in another room and then you come back and you're like that was so fucking stupid why are we fighting about how how we loaded the dishwasher we've done that before like literally are we okay so it's like stupid shit like that that you're like okay it's not that deep but then sometimes you're like okay but is there something deeper as to why i'm so triggered by that and then that's when you need to get into that picking your battles is a big thing mm -hmm. in marriage like what is worth starting an argument and what's worth just being like swallow your pride and like walk away or just go do it yourself like you know what i mean how do you guys stay so in love with a kid and after being together so long i'll answer this okay so wesley's back with his fucking I toy i think it's extremely important to you have to continue to make time for one another yeah you have to continue to Pri prioritize, prioritize quality time when you're taking the time to uh you know still act like you're dating go on a date go and spend time one with another cuddle at night to have conversations to talk about your day it really is an accumulation of a lot of the little things that you know just build a relationship Keep the spark alive and you know when you have a, a solid foundation of a relationship and you continue to have you know sparks then you have a a light and a flame that just is there you know and you keep feeding it but yeah. that flame is it just it keeps going you know Aww, i love you i love you too in all honesty though like being so transparent never does the love ebb and flow brady and i are always so mm -hmm. in love with each other but i feel like like the love never ebbs and flows but the like like that little spark sometimes does ebb and flow a little bit and it's dependent on how much effort you're putting in mm -hmm. so i feel like when our spark is like not as sparky or whatever it's because we're like sitting on our phones at night we're like not spending time together we're not we're not prioritizing night. date nights like we're not mm -hmm. hiring a nanny to come help us with date nights we're like getting in such a groove which when you are married to your best friend you get so comfortable that it sometimes is easy to like get in that like we don't need to prioritize that sometimes like you just get so caught up in, in life. life yeah yes but and especially you do that with a kid like when we had no kid we were it was constant date nights and sleepovers and whatever but now it's like we have to prioritize like the date nights and the conversations with each other and the whatever and obviously it's easy like i said when you're married to your best friend but that is like what keeps the spark alive is like being able to recognize okay i need to put some more effort in you need to put some more mm -hmm. effort in like marriage is work like, like marriage is constant work at like 
just loving each other and like building that you're constantly building your relationship with your partner mm -hmm. so it's like i'm saying it's work in that way it's not work and like oh marriage is hard work it's like marriage is work of constantly wanting to mm -hmm. deepen your relationship mm -hmm. and your love for that person but it's one of the most important things the most important thing you know arguably in your life so it should be something that you value and that takes time and that you know you put that effort into because that's your person you also know? like i know that people say and i i don't know if this will be controversial like i know that people say like your kid comes first and while i do think that that's true your marriage is where everything started and your marriage is arguably one of the healthiest or most unhealthy part of your child's childhood coming from someone who had divorced parents this is a puppy still if you can't tell your marriage is very up there and like you need to be giving it the time because i feel like that that in return makes the dynamic better it your family is stronger your child sees a healthy relationship like i just think that there's so much that goes into that so okay intermission because Bree's washing his hands because Wes slobbered all over his hands Okay, I think we'll do like two more questions. Okay, I'll actually answer this one while Brady is washing his hands. Did you know before when Brady was going to propose? I had an inkling because we had gone ring shopping. We had had very open conversations like uh, that we wanted to get married. And we um, took a trip, and we took a to, trip Hawaii. to Hawaii. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. I was like, this bitch is getting down on one knee at some point in this trip. Some point in this trip. Maybe I'll have Scotty um, insert a picture from our engagements because oh, yeah. I love those pictures. Yeah, me too. And it was the most us engagement. It was like I so think, chill. I think she had an idea when we booked a trip to but, Hawaii. But there together. was a night in Hawaii that I like for sure thought it was going to happen. And, and I was didn't. like, what the fuck? And I remember that Brady was so nervous because it was like raining or something or like well, the weather was not right. And Brady was like, I can't do it tonight. Like, it was supposed to happen at the beginning of the trip and it ended up getting pushed i think there was bad weather or something and it was about to get pushed one more night and we were like no we can't we can't make her wait any longer because we all emily knew everyone knew i mean it was just kind of like when's it gonna happen kind of a thing yeah okay this is like so, this is like such an easy question but i don't feel like we answered like light questions like this we went right into the questions how old are you guys and how long have you been together? We're about to hit five years in November. Of being married. Yes, but we've been together for six and a half years. We met in Yeah, because 20... a year and a half. We dated for a year and a half. We've been married for almost five years. So we about meet... six years. We met in 2018? Mm-hmm. That's crazy. I know. Almost six. Like, on our anniversary, it'll be, like, around six and a half years. Um, I'm 25. And I'm 27. And almost 28. Brady's birthday is September 14th. 17. September 7th. So, so confidently. I get it confused. I know my husband's birthday is September 17th, you guys. It's because Triggs. I know she knows it's it It's because too. Triggs is July 14th. I know she knows my birthday. I hate That's myself. Why I really said September 14th. And then you're like this. <laughs> Brady goes. <laughs> I'm like, Ugh. You know I know your birthday I is September 17th. Birthday. But I'm going to get so much shit for that. And hers is January 22nd. Last question. Best part about being married young? Because we got married when I was 20 mm -hmm. and Brady was 24. Were you 24? Whoa, girl. Wait, what? No, I was 24. I was 24. I was 24. Best part of being married young is that we get to grow up together. That's what I was gonna And say. like learn things together. And while that's also the actually the hardest part of oh, growing 100%. up young or growing up young. We were fortunate to have done it together. We grew up together i know well, in other that just cases our personalities like totally yeah there are other instances where people grow get married young and they grow apart and we fortunately grew together and um that obviously comes from loving one another and getting through the good and the bad together we get to grow up together and it's been very fun if you think about though honestly when we met we were babies anyways uh camera just stopped for the second time because we've been going for so long but best part of growing up together or 
basically be married young is growing up together okay i hope you guys like this q a um i feel like we answered actually a lot of questions that you guys like normally have for brady and i but i love you guys so much and let me know what you want to see next and don't forget to like comment and subscribe please <laughs> <laughs>